Hello, Basement Programmers, and welcome to the BasementProgrammer.com YouTube channel. This is Tom from BasementProgrammer.com. This is the first episode in a series of videos called An Introduction to Textract with .NET. I'm breaking this series up into bite-sized chunks so that you can get going quickly and then come back for the next step when you're ready. In this series, we're going to cover a machine learning service by AWS called Amazon Textract and how you can integrate this service with your own ASP.NET web applications. So what is Amazon Textract? Amazon Textract is a service offered by AWS that allows you to interrogate images and document files to extract text. Conceptually, Textract is similar to optical character recognition, or OCR software, that you may have used in the past, in that the result of the scanning of the image is text. However, that's where the similarities end. Textract uses machine learning to improve the quality of the text extracted, as well as enabling cool things like helping to identify table and form data for you. We're going to start with a simple use case for the first episode. We're going to start with a simple application that allows users to upload a file. We'll then save that file to Amazon's Simple Storage Service, or S3. And then we'll use Amazon Textract's simplest method of processing text to extract the text and put the results on the screen. And don't worry, we'll expand this use case in the upcoming episodes. I just want to show you the simplest interactions first. And for all those wondering, all the code will be available on GitHub for free, so you can download it to get you started. As always, you should use caution when, you, when using the code I post. I'm not making any attempt to make the code production ready, so use it at your own risk with no warranties of any kind. Textract pricing is available at this link. In summary, with Textract, you pay for the data you process. The only thing to be aware of is that Textract has multiple specialized scanning modes. For example, scanning for form data and scanning for table data. Each one of these is a separate scan, so you may have situations where you have to scan a single document page multiple times. With all that said, let's get to the code. So here we are inside of my development virtual machine. I set up a basic ASP.NET MVC application using .NET 6 and C Sharp. Now, in addition to my creating my project, I've already done a few things. First, I already have an AWS account, and I have credentials that allow me to access that account from my local machine. If you don't already have a, an AWS account, this is a good time to create one. I'm running Visual Studio here, and I have the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio installed. You can see that over here on the left. This toolkit is really helpful as it puts a lot of the functionality you'll be using during development right here inside of the Visual Studio. While the toolkit is not required for developing AWS solutions, it really does help make life easier. So I highly recommend it. You can see here in the NuGet dependencies, I've also added a few baseline packages for the AWS SDK. In this case, I've added the AWS SDK Core, the extensions for .NET Core, and the S3 SDK. Now, I've done these already because this video isn't about interacting with Amazon S3, and I wanted to save a bit of time. All the rest of the coding we're going to do together. Over here, I've added a controller that we're going to use for Textract. This is a standard .NET 6 controller class for the MVC framework. Now I've added a couple methods that will allow us to do some rudimentary upload button functionality on my web page and hooked it up to S3. All of this code is going to be available in the starter project on GitHub. One thing to be aware of, you do have to replace the bucket name, which is up here, with a bucket that is in your account. Also, have a look at this line here. It's important to make sure that the S3 client that you set up is configured with the same region as the region that the bucket was created. So in my case, my bucket was created in US West 2, which is Oregon. So my S3 uh, client is being set up with, with the endpoint set to US West 2. If you get these two mismatched, you'll get an error when you try to upload. Obviously, we'd normally have these items set in a configuration file, or better yet, stored in something like AWS Parameter Store. 
However, as I said at the start, this code is clearly not for production ready. It is clearly not production ready. So, as my grandmother used to say, do as I say, not as I do. Before we get started, let's fire up the application and give it a test run. As you can see, it's a pretty basic MVC application using the standard template for Visual Studio. I have, however, added this action link to get to the upload functionality. From here, I'm just going to do a sample upload of a file, and I'm going to choose my basementprogrammer.com wallpaper. And I'm going to click Upload, and I'm going to hit the breakpoint that I've set in my code. Now I'm using the S3 transfer utility as it handles all of the hard work for moving files into S3 for me. As with all the items in the Amazon SDK, I'm going to create a request object here. And then I'm simply going to feed in the, I'm going to open the stream from the file and feed that into the request. Now I'm just going to hit continue and allow that to run through. You can see my, my upload completes fairly quickly. And I can test the results by going here to the, the panel from the uh, AWS Toolkit and just hit Refresh. And we can see the uh, file that I've uploaded here. And it has the basementprogrammer.com wallpaper. It does have a GUID as a file name because in my code here, I created the key with a with a new GUID just so I don't have to worry about if I upload the same file multiple times and the file gets clobbered. Next we're going to add the Textract SDK into our project. All of the AWS SDK components are added via NuGet. So here we're going to come up to Packages, Manage NuGet Packages, go to Browse, and search for Textract. So here we have the AWS SDK.Textract, and we're going to click Install, and OK. Now, once that completes, I always like to do a build, to do a rebuild just to make sure everything is good. And there we go. Rebuild all succeeded. Now that we've got the SDK added into our project, let's see about actually tying in the code so we can actually run Textract. So back here I have the save method, which saves my file into S3 and comes back to my upload file action. Next thing I need to do is have a method that will allow me to display my file. So let's add that code to the bottom of this file here. And I'm going to call this scan for text. This is going to accept the file key. It's going to send the file to Textract, which will read the file from S3. It will do the detection here with the detect document text async method. Now this is simply going to go through and detect the strings of text. It's not going to do any advanced processing at this point, like looking for tables. I'll await that, because it could take a little while. Get the results back. And then what I want to do is cycle through the, the collection of results. Now Textract is going to return a bunch of different things called blocks. And blocks is simply a section of text. There'll be a block that indicates the page. There'll be a block that indicates lines. And you also get blocks that indicate individual words. And for my purposes right now, all I really care about is getting the lines of text out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loop through all of those blocks and grab the text. And then I'm going to return that as a single string that will represent the text in the document without any advanced processing. So I've also got here a view, view file action that I'm going to attach to the controller. Now that, I, that action is simply going to take the object key in from the save action that, that was completed before. It's going to run this scan for text option and then create a, a view bag property called display text, 
for my method, uh, for my view. So you can see here the text is actually fairly simple and it follows the standard AWS programming methodology. I've got a client that I create here. I run an action, an asynchronous action, and pass in a request. I can then await. And then because this is referencing S3, I'm going to pass in a document object, which has a pointer to an S3 object that I can retrieve. All right, so now the only thing left to do is to tie in the, the call from upload file through to my new method. And I'm going to do this as a fairly simple replacing the call to default view by redirecting it to my action of view file. Now, the other thing I've already done is I have created a view file view uh, from my application. It's pretty simple. I'm just creating a text area uh, and unwinding that view bag. Uh, display text. So let's have a look at what happens. From the upload file, we won't bother stepping through that because we already saw that before, but I will set a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here Oops. so we can see the interactions with Textract. Now, on my, file, on my desktop, I have a PDF file with the text from the Gettysburg address. So I'll use that as my sample. Here we go to upload your file, choose file. I can browse and select Gettysburg address and upload. Now, uh, save to file. Oh, it still has a breakpoint. I'll allow that to just run. As you can see, the PDF file is taking a little bit longer than my previous file did. All right. And so here I now have an object name, which is my the key to the object that's been saved in S3. And redirect to view file. Set a breakpoint there. Continue. Again, I've got the the uh, object key. So I'm going to step into my method, scan for text. Here I build a sting, string break builder, my client, and then I run it through Textract. Now, here you can see there are 284 blocks that have been retrieved. And there are a bunch of different options here. I've got lines of text, I've got pages. Again, and a line. If I scroll down a little bit more, you can see I've got an individual word. I don't want to pull the individual words. I simply want to gather the lines. So I'm going to cycle through all of these with a for each statement and conditional logic to only grab the lines. I'll let that run. And here, when we get to the end, you can see the text extract has extracted all of the text for me fairly simply. And if you were to compare this with the original file, you should notice that, except for the formatting, the text is pretty well the same. So that wraps up the basics for episode one. In this episode, we were able to upload a file to S3. We were able to then add the SDK for Textract and use tech, the Textract service to grab the text out of a simple document and display it as part of our web application. And next time, we're going to look at a more of advanced use case using Textract to extract the form data out of your uploads. This is one of the features that really makes Textract shine over a traditional OCR software package. Source code for this episode can be found at this link. If you want to follow along as we dive more into Textract, please hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave some comments or email me at tom at basementprogrammer.com. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this video, consider clicking the like button below. 
To hear more from The Basement Programmer, you can find me here at my webpage, on Twitter, and at The Basement Programmer Podcast. Thank you, and see you next time.